Hey guys, uh, Gary back with you for a, another video update on my Silex 7 and on the Silver CNC. We've got a couple of things to update. One, um, I've learned a lot about the new vice, the fifth axis vice I bought, and then not fifth axis the company, but the vice I bought from Silver CNC. And then the other update is about my beloved M-Lock dual station 125 millimeter vise. Um, I, I made a little adapter plate so that I can, so we can play too on this Silver CNC subplate. So let's take a look. So I went ahead and made um, a little adapter plate that converts the, well it ties in with the existing uh, 52 millimeter uh, retention knob capability of this vise and it ties it into the 96 millimeter uh, hole spacing of the of the service place plate and I was always going to do this but the reason I did it so quickly is um, well let's just say I had a lot to learn about this about this vice um, I started running I ran about a week's worth of parts I do a lot of engraving little special engraving stuff and I was getting really terrible surface finishes and uh, basically what I've learned is, well, first of all, I get about five thou lift on this and three thou lift on this when I clamp it up. Um, it, that is repeatable, but then how it clamps in here isn't repeatable. Um, well, I'm not confident doing second ops on this. It's good for first ops. It's, it's aggressive, you know, it's, it's good for what it is, but it's definitely not um, like this vice where this is where this has a fixed jaw it doesn't have fixed jaw um, as such there's no offsetting parts even a slightly offset part is going to lead to racking I know you're not supposed to, to rack a vice um, so you know I do some of my jobs do require a little bit of an offset um, which this does a lot better with and then I've got you know a, a couple other um, more heavy-duty vices for offset work but I digress. Um, another thing with this vise is when I th these these vise jaws aren't parallel with each other in this relaxed position. So when I put a, a dial indicator on after you know after I tram this in, I could never get each position to run zero to run like the other position. It's just I don't know what it is. Um, when I put this vise on, I dialed the front of this in to, to, to running zero, put the vise in, and then I was only two thou off in each position. I went ahead and um, trammed the subplate using this fixed jaw, and then in each position, it was repeatable every time. It ran perfectly zero. So um, this, okay guys, and I'm learning this as I go. Um, you guys are probably laughing, duh, I know you should know this, but I don't know this, I'm learning myself. Um, this vice is not sufficient um, a reference edge to tram in the subplate. The subplate trammed in pretty good, it was, it was within two thousandths of an inch, and now um, I'm repeatable every time so far with this. Um, I suppose... I suppose a good test would be to put in to convert this to the dual station and then and then indicate off this and see if I'm still zero. That would be good to test. And um, when I do run dual station um, operations, I'll do that. I don't think this is going to uh, hurt me in any way. I'm still glad I have this vice. I bought it um, intentionally intentionally for doing the first operation, milling down a big block of um, 41 40 steel which in turn I was going to flip and put into this and, and fin finish up the second op so we're good and now I have the added functionality of having my um, M lock vise I have really enjoyed this I feel so bad for this fixed job but you know what it keeps trucking it doesn't matter it's still running as great good as the day I, day I bought it um, regardless of the paint job so a little bit about this plate so uh, this plate, I bought I bought the steel from McMaster Car. It's, uh, I believe it's six inches. It was a six inch stock, okay? And I bought it precision ground. 
Um, the job was really easy. It's just two ups. Most of the most of the work was done on this underside. Okay, the top side. I didn't do anything to the top except after the fact. I stoned both sides really really well. Um, but the first off op was to put in this contour and the, um, put in these little chamfers and then this final chamfer. Um, I went down two millimeters for that. Okay. I wanted it to be long enough to support this whole vise. This is a lightweight vise and having this attached to it and the, the weight of the, the mass and weight of this is only going to add to, I think, the vise's rigidity and the quality of the parts that I'm going to be able to mill. So I'm, I'm happy. It is a little heavy, but you'll notice on the back side, and I'll go ahead and flip it over here and we can, you'll notice on the back side I've, I've done done some work to uh, take some weight off let me flip it over and I'll run you through what I did on the back side you may have noticed here I've got these I've got these stationed here um, I bought this one new I had this one okay this one's set to set and tightened to 50 Newton meters for opening and closing surf this uh, subplate and then this one is set at 75 for operating this vice the bottom of the uh, of this plate that I made and I lied before this is actually uh, five inches 125 millimeters in width okay and then I bought a foot long I ended up chopping it off on my horizontal bandsaw and then you know milled it started milling it uh, cut it off at 228 millimeters so here's what I got I ran it like this in the M-lock, in the style. Um, I did boring operations to, you know, I, I uh, did boring operations to open up the space to allow these retention knobs and they interface with a 10 millimeter thread. Uh, I did run this with wear uh, because I wanted to get it a, a precise fit. You know, this actually extends into the hole before kind of a you know countersink before it starts threading in and uh, boy I, I snuck up on it in in microns until it's just perfect not too tight that it's gonna get stuck but there's no play and then I used um, I did another boring operation and then a, a through bore all the way to the other side and then used shoulder bolts that tie in perfectly with this vise and it's spot-on it it uh, it did a really good job and then I came in with another uh, uh, end mill and just took out these these holes to uh, take out a little weight and make it look more like an egg carton I guess so that's all I got hopefully that's a real quick video I know none of us have time nowadays to watch long long format videos but I'm uh, it was a fun little project to do and I'm really excited about having uh, my M lock vice set up on, on the mill. It, is, uh, it has been a real treat to use that vise. I've used a lot of Kurtz in the past, um, manual and precision, and I've used this M-Lock. And now this weird little vise I bought from Silver CNC that I'm still trying to figure out. So thanks for tuning in. Catch you later.